Hi, thanks for watching. It's the Lipstick Gal. I wanted to share with you what my favorites were for the month of August. Uh, first of all, I will tell you August is not over. It's only the 23rd today, but I got some big news. So first of all, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, and let me tell you what's been going on. Earlier this week on the 21st, which is a Wednesday, I had some really terrible abdominal pain. Really bad. Like, I fell to the ground. It was so bad. And I'm the person who's had four brain surgeries, and I'm like, brain surgery, no problem. Uh, this laid me low and it was extremely painful. Um, and so I went into urgent care. It turns out I have a ton of gall bladder stones. So I need to have those gall stones removed, uh, which means I gotta take out my gall bladder. <laughs> and uh, I'm recording on a Friday today. Um, my appointment is early next week with the surgeon and I don't know how quickly after that they're gonna wanna do it because normally they don't like to let this sit because things can go south pretty quickly. And also, knock on wood, <laughs> that I don't actually have any gallstone attacks over the weekend because that would send me to the ER and that might actually have them keep me and like, and let's take it out now. So I don't know. So I'm recording this before all of that drama. The other thing I should tell you is if you watch my videos regularly, thank you so much, but I'm probably gonna take some time off like I did when I had a little spot shaved off my nose. <laughs> uh, and not because I won't be able to wear makeup, but because I probably won't want to get out of bed for a couple of days. And then it might take just all I have to get through the day, much less look like somebody who loves makeup as much as I do. So I may take a break, but I'll keep you posted. Um, and let's get into the favorites. All right, the thing that was an absolute revelation for me this last month of August, it started at the tail end of... July and it went into August are these incredible shadows by Sydney Grace. This is the Autumn's Rain palette and I have a whole bunch of singles in here and everything in here is uh, from Sydney Grace. So this is the Raspberry Kiss bundle, these nine here. These nine here are the Mountain Trail and then I have four singles. So the shadows, oh my goodness, they're so good. I can't believe how fabulous they are. I really love them. I've been wearing these almost exclusively this month. I'm not wearing them today because I'm wearing something else that I've been having kind of like a love affair with as well. But I have two videos, one for the Raspberry Kiss bundle, one for the Mountain Trail bundle. And hopefully when I'm feeling better, I'll do a video for you on the Autumn Rain palette. You know, I did one and I had to get a new card because it just ate it. It's like only half there and it's like, but no. So uh, technical problems and I will re-record that, but I'm so, so excited and these shadows have been remarkable. All right, let's talk about the other shadows that I have been loving. It's not so much really a brand or a certain palette, but I've been kind of having this renaissance with small palettes like quads or five shadows. And uh, today I am wearing one of my Charlotte Tilbury. I am wearing the Dolce Vita. I know she recently renamed it like the Bella Sophia, I think. But this is what I'm wearing on my eyes today. And I will tell you, having a limited number of options makes getting ready so fast. And not that I don't love a larger palette like this, but the minute you give me 15 shades, Sometimes I take time putting too many of them on and then it kind of gets muddy or maybe the color combo is not the best, but do you see what I'm saying? So a 32 pan like eyeshadow palette is too much for me, but some of these smaller guys, I've been loving this. Other ones I have been reaching for, this one's really funny. It's the Smoke Balm. Uh, it's three shades from the balm. Love that one. I've also been loving my Natasha Denona. This is the eyeshadow palette five in the palette number 06. This is the old packaging, but these are miraculous, especially this taupey rose goldy shade, like right here. I mean, they're all just like ridiculously gorgeous. They're, these are just the metallics. They're fantastic, but just limited number of options. Another one that kind of fits into that limited number of options is this one here. This is the Tickled Peach. I love this. I just did a video using this palette and it's not the first time I've grabbed for it this whole month. I've been using these smaller palettes a lot. One that you can't get anymore but is like my like everyday favorite is this one from Urban Decay. This is the Kristen Leanne collab. 
This one is called uh, the Daydream Palette, but it just has matte neutrals. And it's like, for my skin tone, it's the ideal shade of light brown, cream color, you know, a warmer kind of peachy color, a dark brown, like the five shades in here. So really, for me, it's been smaller size palettes and the ones from Sydney Grace. Mwah, amazing. All right, I'm gonna put these away. Be right back. I knew that if I didn't get them put away, I was gonna knock them off this little table I have in front of me and things would break and I would be heartbroken. So, thanks. All right, from there, here's what's interesting. I really haven't been wearing a lot of foundation. When I have, I've been trying to finish up this. <laughs> I'm pretty close. I don't know if you can tell, there's like a little spot here where you can see my finger through on the other side. It's clear there. This is the It Cosmetics CC Plus Illumination. This is in my project pan, and I am so wickedly close to being done with this. So I wouldn't say it's a favorite, but it's uh, probably most used for this month. Other things that uh, I finished this up. I didn't think it was gonna be possible, but there's nothing left. There are no more clicks in this, and for that I am grateful. I've had this for too long, but it's a really good formula. I am using the shade Fair, but it's too pink toned. For my, I'm, I'm more neutral, uh, and if I'm gonna choose either pink or yellow, I'm gonna lean more yellow, more with those uh, golden undertones and the pinky undertones. So I wanna see if they have, and I haven't purchased this Maybelline Instant Age Rewind forever, but I wanna see if they have expanded their shade range, like everybody seems to be doing these days, and for that, just a round of applause. More shades, more options for everyone. Another thing I have been loving that I finished as I was putting on my face today is this. This is a uh, Revolution Fast Base Concealer. The shade is C2. If you look at it, there's nothing left in this tube. I ran out of clicks. It clicks, but no more product comes out. And I was like, ah, I'm gonna need another. I don't really need another one. I'm probably gonna try and finish a couple other concealers, but I love this. Now, I don't use this just like you would use. Now, on days that I'm wearing foundation, I use this under the eyes, corners of the nose to cover redness and dark circles here. But on days that I'm not wearing foundation, this turns into my foundation. Not that you should, but a swipe here, a swipe here, and then I start to tap it out. I'm like, oh, and so I have a really perfected area here. I'm like, well, I need a little more coverage here. So a swipe here and a swipe here, and I'll pat it in, and then a little bit on my chin, and it's like, perfect. I love it. It's just enough, not too much, and it's extremely inexpensive, and I can get it at my local Ulta. It's like seven minutes from my house. So I love this. So, so, so good. Other complexion products that I really have been kind of rediscovering in my collection, one of them is this. I'm wearing it today underneath uh, my concealer foundation. <laughs> uh, but I put this everywhere, and I put that uh, the concealer over the top, and it looked beautiful. It looked glowy. It looked dewy. It looked not too much. But then I powdered. And there is a new powder love for me. Now, I've had this for a week and a half. It really shouldn't be in my favorites, but I don't see how I'm not going to be absolutely in love with it forever. And it's this. It's from Huda Beauty. This is the Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder in the shade Pound Cake. So I don't use it under the eyes. I don't bake under my eyes with it because that would age me like a decade or a decade and a half. I don't need an extra 15 years on my nearly 45-year-old face. There's nothing wrong with that age, but I'm not there yet. We'll just hit the brakes and wait to get there. But um, the video that I put up before this, I'll make sure to link it for you, is the first time that I tried it on camera, and that was a week and a half ago. <sighs> Been using this every single time I use powder on my face just to blur my pores. And I use a damp beauty sponge, and I just press it in right here. I don't get it up to my under eyes, so like right outside, like the height of my cheekbone is, corners of my nose, all across my nose, even like on my septum, all the way across here. And then whatever is left on the sponge, I just kind of lightly powder the rest of my face. And then I'll take a different powder, which came in my boxy term this month. The Becca, what is this? The Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. This is beautiful under the eyes. It's beautiful all over the face, but it works so well on my under eyes. I was like, oh, so this is blurring my pores. It's making them almost non-existent. This is great, but not too much underneath my eyes. Doesn't make me look drier. Doesn't make me uh, look older. It just keeps everything where it needs to be without being too heavy. I love these two and I am enjoying them together. So I have kind of rediscovered that I have a lot of blush duos 
in my collection. Maybe not a lot. I have five, but I've been reaching for four of them like nonstop. One of them that I have been loving, and I've been wanting to get more of these, but they're so expensive I haven't. Are these, uh, these are the Air Blush Duos from Marc Jacobs. This one is in Kink and Kisses. And what's great is that if you, you know, hit the side where there's lighter and darker based on, you know, darker stripes with thinner light stripes and lighter stripes with darker thinner stripes. Does that make sense? You know, so one side, if you concentrate on that end, it can be lighter. If you concentrate on the other, it can be darker. Or if you just swipe your brush over the full thing, you get a very even and consistent tone of blush. I have been loving this. Also, I love the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic. This one here is in Love Glow, my favorite one, the one that I'm wearing today is this one, this is Sex on Fire, but they're beautiful that they have two shades and I really love that. Even though this is a very pale shade here, it is so, so pretty. Uh, the other one that I've been reaching for a lot, because I've been wearing a lot more warmer looks today. I was able to wear more of a rosy tone blush because I've been, you know, anyway, I've been loving this one from Jouer. This is the Blush Duos in Adore. This is their lightest shade. I love the formula. I love how large the pans are. And, and I wanted so much to pick up one of those Cover FX duos, the cheek duos that have a shimmery side and a matte side. And I was like, don't do it. You have too much blush already. You already have other duos. And so I've just been pulling out what I have and I have been really loving this kind of options. You know, like if I wanted a little bit darker here, a little bit lighter here, I can do that because you get two shades in each one of these. I've been consistently reaching for chocolate espresso brown eyeliners all this month. Uh, the Milk Makeup long wear, long wear Gel Liner in CEO has been a favorite. And then one of my cream gel colors from ColourPop, this one is in Stomper. They don't make this one anymore. You can get it in a, like a actual pencil, but I want this and I'm gonna keep an eye out. I used to have Brouhaha, which is also really good, but I picked up one that was like the darkest brown they had after they repackaged, but it's, it's really red based and it's not really as dark as this. So I just started dropping some Duraline in there to kind of, it had gotten really dried out. And so I dropped some Duraline in there and it kind of, you know, revived it, brought it back to life. I don't know that I should be using it, especially in my waterline, but I haven't had any problems yet. I've been using basically two eyebrow pencils all month long. One was a real revelation to me and I really, really like, and it's this one from Trustique. This is their mini brow pencil in the shade Americano. It has more of that triangular shaped tip. I really love the consistency. I love how it's um, not too creamy. Uh, it, it's a little more on the dry side, but it means I can really draw a line exactly where I want it. I always do feel like, what, did I leave the cap off? I always freak out. I'm like, no, 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 it's smaller. It's triangular tips, don't freak out. But I really like this one. And the other one is this. It's my beloved Lancome Le Crayon Poudre. Like, that's all that's left. It's, it's enough. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to sharpen it. I've been trying to finish it up. I've been trying to finish a lot of things up. And the fact that I'm nearly done makes me happy, but also sad. I'm almost at the point where I just dropped it. Of course I did. I'm almost at the point where the two gold caps on either end meet. So we're getting down to the nothings. Another brow product that I have been so in love with again, I finally picked up another Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Brows in the shade Linda. It's got the smallest, most teeny tiny baby wand. It has fibers. It's the perfect shade. It's not too dark. It's not too light. And on days that I'm wearing almost no makeup, I'm wearing like a little bit of concealer, a little bit of lipstick that I use both as lipstick and blush, and I want my brows to look groomed, I just back comb this in. And it gives me, because the fibers give me brow hairs that I didn't think I had. <laughs> well, which I don't have, but it makes it look like I have hairs there. And then when I brush them through, it also gives me a really nice feathered, very tall and lush look to the brows, but still very natural. So I love this product. All right, lips. There's a lot here. I've been going for, if you were to look at all of these here, I'm just gonna hold them up. They're all very plummy red tones. I've been loving these. So um, I'm down to here. I don't know if you can see it like right here with the So Juicy Gloss 
This one is in the shade Dress Code. I do have a light layer of this on. The only drawback to this formula, it is so thick that if you get too much on, <laughs> It will start collecting like right here in the corners and you get that really sticky stringy appearance or right around the edge of your lip line. So I like to put a little bit on my finger and tap it in where I want it and not get it too close to where that line is between your lip on the outside and your lip on the inside where it's wet because it starts to collect there and uh, I hate that look. So I love the feeling, it's a slight tingly feeling. I like the shade of this, but I have to be careful how I use it. Uh, I don't know that I would repurchase any more of these, but I am loving it. I'm like, I use it almost, well, I'd say probably four or five times a week, either by itself or on top of things. I really have been enjoying this. I rediscovered this. I picked this up last summer. This is from Lancome. This is their Labsalu Lacquer in the shade 168. I don't know what the name is. It does have a name, but it is a beautiful kind of, it's not really red. It's not really pink. And you see how glossy it is? It stays glossy. It also sets as a stain. So as this gloss starts to wear off, you do have color that lingers on your lips. And if you want to reapply, unlike some liquid lipsticks which can grab and ball up, this doesn't. This reapplies beautifully. And that's why I've been liking it. Another product that reapplies beautifully over the top of itself so you don't have to take it all off is this. This is the, oh, what's it called? The Revlon Kiss Cushion Lip Tint. This is my favorite shade. This is Wine Trip. Oh, I love this so much. And again, shiny, beautiful. Uh, it looks good at full strength and it looks good sheared out. It wears down beautifully. It doesn't end up like leaving like a really harsh line on the outside when the center is gone. It really wears evenly and beautifully. I have been loving it. Another one, this is like in my purse, I love this. This is from Neutrogena. This is their Revitalizing Balm. And I know that there's a shade to this, but I don't know where it says it on the packaging. But on the days that I'm not wearing anything, but I have sunglasses on, like time to go pick up my kids and I'm not wearing any makeup, I'll put on my dark glasses and then I'll put this on and it, perfect. I love it. All right, back in love with this. This is Medieval from Lipstick Queen. This is my all-time favorite sheer red. It doesn't really look like a lot here. You can build it up. It's basically a vitamin E stick. I use it like chapstick, especially in the summer or on days when I don't want a really heavy look, but it really does remind me of a lot of those Renaissance pictures with like the little cherubs, like in the corners of the paintings or like coming down from above and they have like the rosy cheeks and the really flushed lips, but it never looks like they're wearing makeup. They just look like kids coming in from the cold or having run around and played all day and they have a really flushed lip and cheek. I love this shade, so comforting, so nurturing and absolutely gorgeous. Still head over heels for this. This is the Burt's Bees Tinted Lip Oil. This one here is in the shade Crimson Breeze. I had to actually go and get this out of my purse. It's hard to put on when I'm not watching it, but I don't know that I have many clicks left. <laughs> I wish it did what um, some of my other click up items do like this. You can tell that, oh, I'm almost out. I wish they would do that with this, but I'm really loving these more uh, berry or red tone. Hello. I'm really loving these more berry and red tone glossy, 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 glossy. Some of them are glossier than others, but I'm really, really loving them. Two other really bright reds I have been loving. One is from Vibe. This is their Outwear Long Last Lip Stain in the shade Sangria, which is gorgeous. Uh, the one thing I will tell you, if you get one of these Outwear Long Wear or whatever lip stains, it doesn't travel outside your lip line, but if your hair is down and it's a windy day and it kind of gets in your lipstick and you drag it out and you get those little lines, clean them up. <laughs> or if you're like brushing your hair out of your face, I did this the other day, I was brushing my hair out of my face and I didn't realize I caught a little bit here and I got it up here. It stains, it stains. I love that it stains because when it stays on my lips and it doesn't go everywhere, it's beautiful. But this I wear with, um, I love it and I continue to wear it, but I just check it a lot because I am a little messy when it comes to like wiping hair out of my face because I have really big, it's contained today, but really big curly frizzy hair that kind of gets stuck in whatever lip I have and lip product I have. This is another one. This is the Hourglass, 
what is it? Confessions Slim in the shade. <gasps> They're almost identical. No wonder I loved them. So this is the Bite Beauty one. This one here is from Hourglass. This one seems to be just a hint warmer. This one is just a little bit cooler, but the beautiful. So this one is in the shade my icon is. I've been wearing this a lot. And the, the fact is it doesn't take more than one swipe. Like if you do one, so let me show you, one swipe, you get full opacity. So the fact that I'm already like down in here where it's not full to the top, I've been using this a lot and I've had it for just a month. I love this. This is uh, Glossier's Balm.com in their Mango Balm. Oh, this is my second tube. I've already gone through it. I, they just came out with it. It hasn't been out for that long. I bought my first tube, I think in end of, no, 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 no. I bought my first tube in May. By the beginning of July, I was out. So I got another one mid-July and I'm almost out of my, I bought this like in the three pack. So instead of being $12 a piece, they were $10 a piece. Love, love, love this. And the other thing that I am wearing today is this, it's Charlotte Tilbury's. Angel Alessandra, this is her Hot Lips version two. I love this. This was one, I have two. I got um, both nudes. I feel like Charlotte does nudes so well. Why would I buy like a burgundy color or a red? I have so many reds, I have so many wine tones and her nudes work beautifully on me. So this is the one that's more peach and it's Angel Alessandra. And this one here is JK Magic. So if you were to look at them, a little bit warmer, a little bit more neutral. Uh, this one actually looks maybe even, I shouldn't have it rolled up that far. Oh, I'm asking for trouble. So this is the JK Magic, and this here is the Angel Alessandra, and I tend to really go for more of these um, neutrally or pinky nudes, and the ones that lean a little bit more peach, I don't reach for as much. But I wasn't close to a Sephora that stocked these or Nordstrom, so I just bought them based off of reviews or swatches that I saw online and I thought I would like both of these. When this came, it's like all I wore. I wore, this was my, my go-to nude and I still like it, but I'm finally figuring out how to wear this warmer nude. And I don't usually go for peachy nudes because I feel like they don't make my teeth look as white as a pinkier nude, but I have fallen in love with this shade this month and it's what I'm wearing today. All right, I did have some fails, and I feel like I should say everything in the Trustique video, which I will actually link for you above, and I'll put in the description bar below. Okay, almost everything was uh, not good for me. First of all, I've tried this a couple more times since that video. This is their Tint Moisturize and Blend Face Stick. I like the packaging because it's magnetic. It is a very natural foundation stick, but it doesn't last. And if I'm gonna take the time to put on a foundation, I need something that's gonna last. And even with powder over the top of it, I didn't powder my face the day that I did that full wear test of Tristique Only Makeup. It does wear better with powder, it does last longer, but it still looks like by three or four in the afternoon, it's like I'm not wearing anything. And if I'm gonna take the time in the morning, I wanna look like I still have it on. <laughs> if you don't mind reapplying and you don't powder, you might actually like that. Everything else that I have is in here. And if you saw the video, you know that their eyeshadow color crayons didn't work for me. I only have one in Aspen Pine. It didn't, not only did I not like the color, and I do like greens, I also felt like it collected in my, like the crease of my eyelid. And at the end of the day, I had a little bit clinging to my lash line and a little bit there, and then a slight kind of dusky look all over the lid. But I had a really definite line right in my crease. And I don't really like that. So if this is supposed to be ease of application, this was a fail for me. Another thing that was a huge fail for me, the well, there's two, was the concealer stick, because it's actually darker than the foundation stick. And it is a little peachier in tone, so it does kind of help hide the dark circles. But if you put it anywhere else because you're looking to get more coverage than you get in this, it doesn't match. Uh, this is in their lightest shade, and this is in their lightest shade. And I was hoping that they would go well together. And they, 
Maybe it works for you if you have these products. It didn't work for me. I didn't like it and I don't like the consistency of that concealer. Another thing that I really didn't like was this mini eye pencil. This is in the shade Black Santorini Sands. Uh, the thing that I noticed is that mine is actually broken. It came that way. I was very sad about that. It, you know, it, the cap for this is really nice. It keeps it all in there. So, you know, if it shakes out and then I open it and it's kind of like out here, I can always like tap it down and then, you know, push it up to where it works and then I can use it. But it smudges really easily. It doesn't stay indelible. So I've had it on my upper water line and I was just crying little black panda tears all day. So those were my fails. Another one that was kind of like, I really wanted to love it. I really wanted to love it. And I've had this for quite a while now, is uh, this. This is the Cloud Nine setting powder in the shade Fair from Sydney Grace. I love the shadow so much, but this left a really definite white cast on my face. They do have a light shade, but from what I was reading online, People who had fairer skin tones and got the colored powder in light were saying it was too dark for their skin tone. And this one looks like powdered sugar. It's basically white. It's very finely milled, but it really reminds me of the HD powder from Makeup Forever. Remember when that came out like a decade ago? It was everywhere, everyone loved it. And then you started seeing pictures with flashback with like, it looked like there was a lot of white powder on um, celebrities' faces. <laughs> It was all because of the powder like this. This was also supposed to be their mica base powder. I, I don't know if this is mica base because every time I look at it, I don't see even the smallest bit of shimmer. I feel like the only shine I get from this is coming from the plastic that it's on. It's extremely finely milled. This actually looks really good under my eyes, but it does leave a white cast. So I'm gonna try and find a way to make this work because I like the way it looks under my eyes. It looks like there's nothing there and it's not an expensive powder. Maybe I need to play with it more. So this isn't really a terrible product. Maybe I need to figure it out more. All right, so there you go. Those were my favorites and my fails for the month of August. Um, I, like I said before, I'm probably gonna take a break as I'm recuperating from my gallbladder surgery. <laughs> I'm not excited about that. But you know what? This is my 10th surgery. I've done it nine other times. Came out just fine, should be easy peasy lemon squeezy, but the whole knowing that there's gonna be somebody cutting me open, <laughs> not okay with that. But thank you for watching. Um, subscribe if you haven't, and would you be willing to recommend my channel to a friend, somebody who loves makeup videos? I would really appreciate that. So I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.